Call of the Void contains strong language and possible trigger warnings and is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hi everyone, I'm Deacon. I'm Jack. And welcome to Call of the Void, a podcast about all things weird and macabre. <clears throat> now, I really, really, really wanted to tell you guys this week, and I know what I'm going to have to talk about is not going to be the longest thing in the world, so we'll probably have another discussion after this. <laughs> but I want to tell people about this new, well, relatively new web series that exists um called interface now this is um this is a you or a a web series an animation web series by a youtube user named umami umami um, like the flavor the hidden thing taste, yeah yeah uh Yes, this is um, Umami, like U-M-A-M-I. Uh, and they have, and it's about like 10 episodes so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's this really cool little web series that it, the episodes are fairly short. They usually range somewhere around like a minute to two minutes. Um there is an episode that's like five minutes or six minutes, something like that. But that's like the longest that they go. They're not super long animations. And the last one came out like October 11th as of the time of recording this. Yeah. So that's the, that's the last one. uh, Episode 10. Hopefully we get more soon. I would love to see more of the series, but I kind of, it's not got a lot of buzz around it. And well, I want a, to... Yeah. I, that, uh, the thing I was going to say is that, like, animation's really fucking hard. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, uh, just a tiny bit of animation takes, like, an insane amount of work to do. Yeah, it's it, it can get ridiculous. But I wanted to give this a little bit more publicity, I guess. Um... It's incredibly interesting, and it's so far very open ended because there's only ten episodes, so we really don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, but it's interesting, and it's something that I have a lot of interest in. Um, and so I wanted to talk about it with you guys today. So, are there puzzles and stuff to solve? <laughs> there are no puzzles really? to solve. It is just a web series that. Mm-hmm has a sort of strange premise and we don't really know what's going on um i'll explain so i'm gonna start with episode one okay episode one you see this guy uh he's wearing like a blue suit um we find out later in a later episode that his name is henrik so i'm just gonna go ahead and start calling him by his name okay and he's looking at like a storefront and there are these mannequins that have like this weird static in their eyes um and this weird pink clown looking thing oh uh, i bet you love that uh yeah it's it's not my favorite <laughs> but it's like this really long lanky like clown looking thing uh, kind of wanders up to him, and we again we find out later that its name is Mischief. Okay. So I'll re- I'll be referring to them as Mischief. Mischief kind of comes up into the scene, uh, and like I don't know, snatches Henrik's cigarette that he's holding in his mouth, and it just kind of spins in place and slowly falls to the ground, like. Almost as though no time or very little time is passing in between the things that are happening here. Um, And Mischief explains that 
um, they were a part of the Philadelphia experiment. If you know what the Philadelphia experiment is, I've heard of it, and you have to forgive me. I'm on Benadryl right now to <laughs> help my sinuses because I'm I have a cold. So, <laughs> what is what is the Philadelphia project? The Philadelphia. Again? The Philadelphia Experiment was yeah. um, a thing. Uh, it's not real. It's not a real thing that actually happened, supposedly. So, okay, so it was just a... Um, like More a, like a creepypasta. Oh, okay. Um, where uh, a guy basically wrote a, a letter to another person that was talking about how he witnessed this secret World War II experiment that was taking place in the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard that would create an electromagnetic field that would basically make the uh, ship invisible to the enemy. Okay. It was the USS Eldridge, I believe. <laughs> it was supposed to... It, it was supposed to make... Uh, everything invisible, but instead of making them invisible, the ship teleported to New York and all of the crew members either died or were fused into the metal of the ship's hull. That's not good. Um, it says that they were like, you know, teleported to another dimension where it encountered aliens, teleported through time, and then it ended up in New York. And so basically, Mischief says that they were a part of that, the Philadelphia Experiment, and they were destroyed and were forced to regain their physicality, and the physicality that they came up with was this weird, wiggly-ass clown thing with a really deep, demonic voice. Just think how wrong Dr. Manhattan could have gone. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> But the episode ends with the cigarette finally hitting the ground. Okay. And then we move into episode two. Now, again, these are, like, real, real small episodes. They're kind of bite-sized, so you can watch this in, like, a total of 30 minutes. It's not long at all. Um, second episode, Mischief turns into a bus because... It can shapeshift. It can change its physicality to look however it wants to. So it turns into a bus and looks at Henrik and is like, I'm bus. <laughs> and they start driving around and seeing all of these landmarks uh, in Montreal. Uh, they have like this weird static stuff. Um, you know attached to them in some way shape or form when you and say then, okay when you say static you mean like tv static yes it looks a lot like tv static okay like the white noise you see um so it's like there's like like before like, when you okay, said so that with the mannequins it was like there was little tvs in their eyes and it was like moving static Kind of yeah, thing? it was like moving static. Okay. But a lot of the things... Okay, so imagine like a suspension bridge, right? Yeah. But all of the like cords for the suspension are like moving like TV static. Okay. It is a physical cord, but it just looks like TV static. What this is called in the sh the this little animation show thing you'll you'll hear it later it's cerebral electricity all right that showed itself during the philadelphia experiment it wasn't a foreign substance it was just something that presented itself and for us to observe and to study basically hmm is what the guy refers to it as. We'll get to him later. But Mischief turns into a bus and tells the uh, Henrik to, to get on and they start driving around and he's like, uh, it's up to you where we go. If you don't decide on a place, I will. 
and they start driving around past a bunch of like Montreal landmarks and they end up going to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, once they get there, uh, basically mischief takes on Henrik's suit, like the, the form of Henrik's suit. And so Henrik is wearing mischief now. Yes. Okay. And mischief has sort of kind of like air quotes possessed Henrik, even though he's not like he can talk through Henrik's mouth. Henrik doesn't talk so far in the episode at all, or in, in the show at all, even to episode 10. Like, Henrik doesn't talk at all. Hmm. So, he, like, becomes his suit, and then also, like, talks through Henrik's mouth. But, the episode ends with uh, Henrik now wearing mischief as, like, an outfit. Then we kind of skip a little bit to see this new company, this corporation called Greetings Robotics, who are... They're... You see this blimp in the sky, and then it looks down at the United Nations headquarters in New York, and they go to a, an auditorium, and the CEO is talking about how since the Philadelphia Experiment phenomenon... There's now cerebral electricity everywhere. It's immaterial. Um, and it wasn't a foreign substance, but it was rather, like, it was found. And he talks about a whole lot of things while, like, they show scenes of, like, this weird static being studied. And they create this robot called Cammy. Um... Hmm. Doop a doo. Yeah. Uh, trying to find what Cami stands for. The Kinetic Autonomous Mechanical Interface. Hmm. And they there's like this weird face in the static that keeps shifting to different emotions, and then they put the face of Cami down over top of over top of that, and that's basically how like the like she shows up on stage. Uh, puts her hand out and then balls it into a fist and that's like how the episode ends. So we've learned about this new cerebral energy stuff that's you know a thing. Uh, we know a little bit about Henrik and Mischief now. Um, we still don't really know a whole lot about Henrik. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's what I was about to ask you. I was going to be like, what do we know about him? Well, for whatever reason we know that he's not talking mm -hmm. and that he's different than the other people around him because everyone else that you see in that episode where he's on the bus are kind of walking around like zombies. Like they're, they're just like, so clowns and zombies, this, why are you watching this? I mean, they're, they're not, they're not like shambling like zombies, but you know how like people say that, Oh, we're on our phones. So we're zombies or we're just being mindless. Yeah. That's what I mean. Um, so people are kind of like just meandering around. We still don't cut back to um, to Henrik and Mischief just yet. Uh, episode four starts with uh, there's an apartment and there's a TV with static uh, that is also changing faces like Cammy's face did. Mm -hmm. and we are introduced to the ghost who is just this weird I don't know mass um, he has like a skull head um, who basically uh, earlier like we see that there was a, a car that was sinking in a huge pool of like red water and uh you see, like, the ghost on on the shore, and then you see a big hand pull this little girl out of the water, and then basically brings her to life again. Hmm. Like, 
the uh the other ghost sitting next to him like absorbs two streams of static which is probably the energy of the girl's parents who died in the car accident and then he saves the girl and the little girl wakes up to see cammy approaching the window and she like obliterates the side like turns the side of the building that they're in into static and encases the side of the building in the weird like cerebral electricity static stuff and absorbs the ghost into it. What the so, fuck? <laughs> that like gave the the this thing that gave life to this girl who like whatever she like absorbs it into her and the girl is like reaching her hand out a la you know like the the painting of um like David and God. Yeah. It looks like that kind of scene. Mm-hmm. But um, and then the girl is just standing there in the rubble of this building as uh, the ghost is just absorbed into to Cammy. And that's the, that's the end of episode four. <laughs> episode five, we go back to uh, to Henrik and Mischief again. <laughs> Mischief is still um, on Henrik's outfit and he walks uh through the the museum and they see um the son of man by Rene magritte mm-hmm. the the picture of the guy with like the apple in front of his face oh yeah with the bowler hat yeah um the the portrait resembles henrik but with the apple in front of his face and Mischief says that uh, that they forgot what it was like to be human and that it's weird to travel like a human because uh, spaghettification is their normal mode of transportation. Spaghettification. Yeah, that's a really good word. Um, <laughs> and it's basically like going through a black hole. That's spaghettification. Okay. Your entire body being pulled to like the size of spaghetti. Um, and Mischief also says that he can witness the world through Henrik's eyes, but can't feel or sense any meaning behind the things that he does or sees. Hmm. And they're interrupted by, um, a a kid and his mother who walks into the room and Mischief, like, transforms on this, like, portrait of, uh what is it the or it's not a portrait it's a statue uh of the eye mm-hmm. uh or it it, it kind of looks like it and he turns into a big sunflower and then uh he says i am a beautiful sunflower and then the kid kind of like turns away almost as if he's afraid of what he's seeing like looking at his mother's leg like cowering i am I'm getting a headache with this. <laughs> like, what is going on? The episode ends there. Then we go to episode six. Mm-hmm. Where they're still in the museum, but they go to the higher levels and they uh, see a picture um, on the wall that is this weird... Uh, I don't know. It... It takes it takes um, inspiration. Uh, well, no, no, no. It, it is a picture of uh, by Salvador Dali. It okay. is Geopolitica's child watching the birth of the new man, which was also created in 1943, which is when the Philadelphia experiment thing happened, and. It's basically this, like, pink thing emerging from the world and this little kid looking away in fear behind its mother as they watch this thing emerge from the earth uh, as though the earth is cracking open. Hmm. Um, but Mischief says that uh, 
whenever he broke out, he was like a baby chicken. Uh, breaking out of, leaving, like, the shell of Earth behind and uh, bearing witness to, like, what there was. And uh, basically, they, as they're looking at the picture, Henrik has flashbacks to his past and um, his daughter's talking and she's basically like, you know, I always wanted to be a photographer like you being able to stop time. And whenever she says that, like he's taking a picture in front of like a nuclear blast and this like blast, like you see the shockwave coming and it like evaporates a cigarette, but doesn't touch him at all. Hmm. And she's like, I, whenever mom's funeral happened, you know, when she got sick, um, the 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 priest just kind of stared at you she's like i'm an old woman now like you should be um but can you tell me this whenever uh whenever i see mom should we wait on you will you ever show up and henrik kind of like passes out in the museum but yeah. Hmm. Uh So we now know that Henrik is basically immortal. Uh we don't know how, but he is. Episode 7 kind of gives us those answers. Okay. Um well sort of. Well, episode 8 gives us those answers. Episode 7 is basically uh, there's a blimp going around and it's saying like you know, this is how the Earth was created, and the cells and atoms that created Earth have been trying to, like, make themselves more complicated. Now, this is this is a six-minute episode, hmm. and that's literally all he talks about is how the universe was crea- created, and the atoms and things want to make themselves more complex, but why? Was it a blimp, or was it a Zeppelin? It's, it's like a big blimp thing. It's not a Zeppelin, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Well, because there's, like, a lot of... World War Two stuff. That's true. Which is why I asked. But Cammy is standing in like T pose in this thing, and she brings the blimp to life, and then takes the life away from the blimp. I don't know why. It just <laughs> happens. It's called the. Sacrithitis, which is apparently like a tiny bag like sea creature. <laughs> and she like literally like brings this thing to life. You can see like brain waves and stuff, and then she takes that away. Hmm. It's I guess kind of hinting that like Cami is now God. <laughs> <laughs> like, no joke. Um, then episode eight, we start with like a bunch of like weird B-roll footage where it's like, uh, secure beneath the watchful eyes. And then it has like, uh, greetings robotics on it (laughs) as though we're like safe because of Cammy. And then there's a commercial about this like really weird hazmat's monster collection thing. (laughs) And then mischief shows up and kind of tells, now, he's a bird, and he looks at the the, the Henrik's uh, records, and it's like, oh, you were born in 1910? He's like, these women in here are like, and, and the, the nurses in the next room are probably wondering how, like, a hundred-year-old man has clearer, uh, like, smoother skin than they do. He was like, if you stay here in this hospital, they're probably going to want to keep you for themselves. So he turns into a parachute, and Henrik jumps out of the window. Hmm. And that's how the episode ends. So, episode nine, Mm -hmm. they go to this sushi restaurant, and Mischief is still on um, Henrik's, like, as a suit. And he talks through Henrik and says something along the lines of, isn't it a little bit cannibalistic uh, for you cutting up all those sea creatures? To which the octopus, who is... uh, the chef 
uh, <laughs> replies something that's basically along the lines of, uh, it's in Japanese, but it's, uh, Mischief says, ah, the, the strong eat the weak. And he says something about, like, what about parasites? And the octopus says, isn't that what you're doing, Mischief? And kind of, you know, lets us know that they know each other. Huh. Because he tells them that, like, at the very beginning, that the restaurant doesn't open until five. So, they're chit-chatting or whatever. The a mysterious figure, like, walks into the room. And the octopus is like... Um, I've been having these weird visions lately about a machine that like processes the world in ones and zeros. Uh, what kind of camouflage, you know, can you put on for a being that processes the world in black and white? And because he was like, I can change my color, but how do I camouflage myself if all this thing sees is black and white? Hmm. Um, and Mischief goes, is this about the weird guy that's standing in the middle of the room staring at us? And he, uh, they transform into a fly and, like, fly over to the, the weird figure's nose and land on it. By they, and they transform, you mean just... Just Mischief. Okay. Yeah. So, they transform into a fly and land on the guy's nose and are basically like... Hey, I think you're a little bit early. The restaurant doesn't open until five. Hmm. And then for episode 10, we kind of cut away from all of the main action again to get like what is essentially like weird flashbacks. There's like this piano thing playing and you see a little girl playing the piano and Henrik walks up or what looks like Henrik walks up and looks out the window and you see... You see him getting married, and he's, like, taking pictures. He takes a picture of his wife or whatever. She's holding a baby. And there's other three other figures, like, standing behind them, and they're, like, their faces are blacked out, so you can't really see them. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts back to the scene of him looking out the window, and his the, the little girl isn't there anymore. And that's the end of the episode. So, it's super vague so far. We don't really know, essentially, what's going on. We know that Henrik is different. He's not just a normal person. We know that Mischief is, like, this weird thing. Okay, so, does this take place in the 40s, or does it just reference stuff from the 40s? It references stuff from the 40s. I mean, it takes place, uh, well, it takes place 100 years after... Or at least a hundred years after uh, nineteen ten, so like twenty ten, okay, roughly. Okay. But yeah, hmm. so they they've been able to harness this weird like cerebral electricity thing and create this robot that has essentially become God, and we don't really know like what's going on. <laughs> It can also shape shift or whatever because Cammy is the weird mysterious figure that walked into the sushi restaurant, but she was disguised as what looked like a Japanese man. Hmm. So, like I said, we don't really know too much about what's going on with this series yet. It's yeah. all very strange and vague. Um. So. I just kind of wanted to give a synopsis up to this point of, like, things that have happened. There are a lot of theories. Um, Nightmare Expo recently did a video on it, on the first nine episodes. Mm -hmm. um, which, uh, their video goes into detail about some of the, the theories that there are. Um, but, yeah, it's a super, super interesting... Um, like web series and i definitely think it's something that like you guys should all like keep up with because it's really cool again it's interface um it is by youtube user umami <laughs> yeah. um which i mean they have a lot of really cool and obscure like super weird animations all over their uh youtube so it's worth like just to check out the other animations that they've done. 
but yeah interface is really 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 cool and i'm super excited to see where else this goes i want to watch it now myself because there are a couple things i'm thinking might be going on but yeah I, I like being told something and seeing it for yourself are two different things so i could come away from watching it with completely yeah. different opinion opinions I, I I very much think that you should watch it. Um, again, the episodes are very short. I did a refresher on it earlier today just to make sure that I knew everything that was, like, to talk about. Mm-hmm. Took me maybe a total of, like, 30 minutes max. Okay. Like, it doesn't it doesn't take too long. Too long. Just with the first 10 episodes, it was, like, maybe 30 minutes. Hmm. So, I mean, it, it's definitely a great watch. And that's also including, like, ads... <laughs> <laughs> yeah because youtube um but yeah it, it's it's a fantastic series and i very very highly recommend it hmm. um but i knew that that wasn't going to take us a very long time to talk about mm-hmm. uh i mean it took us somewhere around like 30 minutes or so mm-hmm. but um do you still want to talk about our other topic? Uh, yeah. Uh, I figured that this might be something that would interest you and you might know more about than I would, considering you want to become a mortician. hmm Okay, so I was reading this article, like, a week or two ago about, like, when... Uh, I won't say I'm fascinated by it or anything, by these kinds of things, because despite being very well acquainted with death, it's not something I really like to think about very often. But occasionally I'll come across something like this and I'll be like, huh, that's that's kind of food for thought. So one of the things that uh, I saw uh, a week or two ago was this article talking about how When you die, one of the options you can go with for your body is, like, this cocoon, like, pod thing that gets planted in the ground and turns into a tree. (laughs) Yep. And I've seen those, and they're actually really, really, really neat. Um, Mm -hmm. So, basically, they, they... you go through a process it's I guess similar to like cremation okay and they take your remains and they put them into this pod thing that is basically gonna be food for this tree yeah the picture that I saw it was an illustration but it was like somebody's body like that they put in the fetal position in this yeah. thing and then stick it in the ground I mean, that's a little bit, uh, I guess, gratuitous. <laughs> but there are other options that you can go with. Um, aquamation is a thing that's becoming very, the very... fuck is that? <laughs> very, very popular. Uh, essentially, they put you in a big, like, metal tube. And they pump a mixture of, like, water and lye into, into the to the chamber and that eats your body away and the only thing that you're left with is like a a a fine white clean powder and uh a fluid that can be safely dumped down a sink or into a drain Hmm. there is no like dangerous chemicals or there's not like you're not sticking a body in a furnace and having, you know, all the fucking mercury that's like, cause you know how if you have feeling fillings in your teeth, mm-hmm. those are mercury. So I didn't know that. Yeah, those are mercury. So whenever you like cremate a body, you are if a person has fillings, like you're putting mercury into the air, huh? Um, which is not good. No. Uh, if you know about the whole, like, tri-state uh, crematorium thing. 
I do not. What the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, basically a guy... Because I'm... Uh, yeah, like I'm in the quote-unquote tri-state area, so... A guy started making... Um, or a guy... Uh, he was running a crematorium that like his family ran forever. And essentially, like to make a long story short, they found that he was like dumping a lot of the bodies outside instead of cremating them. <laughs> And he got super arrested, but turns out like super he was suffering. <laughs> he was he was suffering from like mercury poisoning from burning all the bodies because they had fillings in their teeth and the mercury was getting in the air and he was basically literally going mad as a hatter. Okay. Because that's what that term means. Well, I was um, I was going to say, what's his weird end game, but then yeah, he was wow. he was literally like inhaling a lot of mercury oh, and poor it was dude. making him insane. Um but yeah, I mean, well that, at least that's that's one thing that they've they've kind of put out there or talked about. Um did I yeah. ever did I ever tell you about one of the cuz I I make jokes sometimes about st- stuff I'd want to do, and, like, I kind of wanted to make a skit of this one, because, like, one of the things that I'm, that I actually am fascinated by is that you can get your remains turned into essentially a a vinyl record. Oh, yeah. And put, like, your favorite music and shit on there. So, I told my, I, I was talking to Reaper once about it, and I was saying, like, it would be really funny if like i i record a heartfelt message to put like on the first track and just have everybody like sit in a room like as part of my final wishes just sit in a room have have somebody very somberly go over and put the record onto a record player and then unbeknownst to everybody in the room they lock the doors and it's just like an hour straight of Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> or um, what is it? Uh, Eleven. It's uh, what's new? Pussycats with one. It's not unusual. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the sentiment is the same. But like, yeah, and just like record it, and like have somebody outside like watching everybody trying to get out. <laughs> Yeah, it, um... Because that's what I want. I want chaos for... (laughs) One of the things that I've always said is, um, there is a thing that you can do where you can... I don't... I don't exactly know how to go about it, so I need to do a little bit more research. But you can essentially donate your body to be part of a coral reef. Aww. Um, which is really cool, and it's something that I want to do. Like when I go, um, but yeah. Um, so one of the things that I talk about a lot is how uh, embalming and all that stuff is awful. Um, hmm. because it's formaldehyde, and for how formaldehyde is a carcinogen, yeah. and we're pumping tons and tons and tons of it into the ground all the time we bury our dead, and then you know rainwater hits that and that runoff gets formaldehyde in it which is one reason why a lot of people are starting to get cancers yeah a lot because we're embalming our dead it's not a process that we need to do legally we don't have to embalm people and embalming was a thing that was created so that you could like transport bodies long distances and they would not rot particularly in times of war so how would not embalming work for like wakes and stuff like body viewings uh well okay so a lot of times um a lot of times at funeral homes like to be like oh we have to take the body immediately yeah um they don't you can keep a body in your house for as long as you want like literally as long as you have proper refrigeration you can keep a body for weeks if you (laughs) wanted to um i mean and you can go to any local grocery store and get dry ice for like five bucks like that's all you need like that's it (laughs) Hmm. um but yeah like 
without like we don't have to go through and do embalmings we can keep proper refrigeration the body will stay fine you can do it in home wake or whatever you need to do <laughs> the body can be put into a biodegradable like coffin with a well, with a biodegradable shroud on it and put well, in the ground and it'll decay if you didn't want an in home wake because that's kind of morbid and scary uh like, must you get a body, uh, no. um, in order to... You still don't have to, you still have to get it embalmed. Hmm. There are plenty of places, um, I watch a YouTube channel called Ask a Mortici uh, Mortician. I've heard of it, I haven't watched it. And she's talked about this a lot, like, some funeral homes offer, like, as long as the body is not, like, super decaying or whatever... <laughs> As long as you have access to proper refrigeration, and sometimes these funeral homes have access to proper refrigeration and can allow you to use it. Hmm. You can have, like, a wake in the funeral home where you're not, you know, having a body in your home. Because, I mean, a lot of people do like to have in-home wakes, uh, especially, like, Hispanic people love to have them. Hmm. Um, it Yeah, it, it's a... Um, or more europe like europeans they they like to have yeah. uh in home wakes <laughs> but especially like i think particularly the irish yeah i was actually gonna uh mention that um but you can also go to a funeral home like some of them and request like to have a wake there or whatever like it it doesn't have to be you do not have to embalm the body <laughs> like legally you do not have to embalm the body and funeral homes like to try and manipulate, you know, people who are already grieving mm -hmm. into doing things they don't need to do and spending more money than they don't need to spend. Yeah. Um. So, like, a direct cremation, you can have that done for, like, 2,000 bucks. Like, that's usually, like, your cheapest option. Like, the body has no refrigeration, it goes straight from wherever it is, your wake or whatever, and it goes into being cremated. And then you get the remains back. That's like 2000 bucks. Hmm. It's like, super cheap. Or sometimes you don't, and your loved one spends three years on a slab somewhere. <laughs> yep, that's, um... Yep. You know, call I back to episode one. <laughs> yeah, call back to episode one, and I still cannot believe it. Like, it's literally, we. There are options that you have where you don't have to embalm the body. And a lot of times, like like I said, a funeral home will, will try and manipulate and lie and. You know, that kind of thing to people who are already grieving, and I think that's wrong. That's super wrong. Um, but they know that it's a it's a situation where they can be like, oh, well, we'll just let the body rot on you then. Hmm. You know, that you don't really have too much of a choice. Um, what you do, and most people just don't know that they do, but you don't have to get a body embalmed. Uh, that's a lot of unnecessary money. And it's money that you really shouldn't be putting into, you know, having a body embalmed because it's a useless practice that we don't really have to do anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's mostly for, like, transporting bodies from, like, overseas. It's for, like, you know, if somebody dies in war and we transport yeah. their body back to the States, you would have the body embalmed then. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, like, we're... We're, we're dumping a lot of a carcinogen in the ground and we don't need to do that. It's very bad. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very much on the side of, you know, educating people. <laughs> yeah. Of, hey, here's things you don't really need to do. So preferably don't do them. Um, But yeah, like literally there, there are other options. Uh, if you wanted to have like a natural burial... You can, instead of, like, if you wanted to go, like, completely green, you can get a biodegradable shroud. <laughs> it's like a canvas shroud. <laughs> that way you're not putting, like, clothes into the ground. They're going to have to take time to, to decompose. Yeah. The body is wrapped up in the shroud. You can keep the face open so you can see their face, but they're still wrapped in their shroud. 
then the the little hood thing, like they put that over and tie it up, and then they put them into a biodegradable coffin, and they put them into the ground where their body will rot like it's supposed to. Hmm. <laughs> you have like tons of options um, that are much better than cremation or, um, you know, embalming. Uh, like I said, aquamation is a thing that's becoming extremely popular. You can actually get yourself aquamated in, uh, like California, and it's slowly starting to make its way across the states, um, as becoming a legal thing. There's nothing wrong with it, but people are like experimenting with it with pets first. So you can actually have your pets aquamated. Um, and like a lot of people, a lot of times you'll see like, like veterinarians and stuff like that offering aquamation for animals but it, it's getting to a point where it's becoming more and more popular for humans as well because yeah. it's very eco-friendly hmm. less hazardous chemicals and all the like yeah <sighs> but <laughs> after my little rant about funerals and mm-hmm. and ways that you can you know, go about having your your body interred and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's about all the time we've got for this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's a little bit disjointed with the two completely separate topics, but we hope that you re- enjoyed it regardless. Well, technically, the first well, one was talking about an immortal person, and then we were talking about mortality. Uh, that's fair. That's that's <laughs> true. That's true. Oh, but it's a stretch but i'm going with it with that mm-hmm. uh we would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful and generous hosts uh the fierce ferrets bat and gideon mm-hmm. uh for letting us host our podcast on your site you guys are wonderful and amazing um you should definitely check out their comics uh beelzebub and dungeon minis and also star minis which me and jack are a part of um we if you want to catch more of us we are in the last light podcast and uh the actual live play sessions on the fierce ferrets twitch twitch.tv slash fierce ferrets um and you can also catch us in drunk fandom when season three starts up soon or season two starts up soon yeah (laughs) Ugh, tired yeah it's one of those (laughs) yeah But yeah, so with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. And until then, sweet dreams.